Magandang araw, podmates! We are here today to talk about TikTok. You know, what older people like me like to bash as a trashy platform full of bad dancing and fake news and blame for everything from the lack of discipline of the youth to bad election outcomes. My guest today is a different kind of TikTok video creator known online as Mighty Magulang. Yes, she is a parent and not a new parent. Welcome to the show, Mighty Magula, also known by her real name, Mona Magno Belus. Magandang araw sa iyo. Hello po. Hello, Howie. Salamat sa pag-imbita. You are a nanay. Uh, that's why you're a Mighty Magulang. No? You have grown up children. TikTok is associated with youth. No? So what on earth is a nanay like you doing on TikTok? I went on TikTok really as a self-indulgence. Last year, I, I've only been on TikTok for a year. Last year, medyo sad ako na parang uh, the, the, the pandemic was weighing on me and I said, I had to do something new. I've always been a content creator. I started blogging many, many years ago. I've been active on social media. And I said, Uy, I, I don't know TikTok yet. So let's try that. And when I went on TikTok, I was looking at what the, ki- the kids were doing and I said, I can't do that. Na parang cringe kaya kung, kung, <laughs> kung gawin ko yon and my kids would would disown me if I did. So I looked at what I had and what I can share and that is really uh, genealogy and history because that is my passion. That is something that I really like to do. And even then when I started doing my content, people were telling me, masyado mahaba ang, ang TikToks mo. Dapat 8 seconds lang. Imagine a history class in 8 seconds. Napaka, napakahirap no na no. So I said, no, I'm still going to do my thing. Bahala na lang. Kahit na scene, kahit na ako lang ang nanonood ng videos ko, okay lang sa akin yun. It, it really gave me joy to create those short videos and I'm just happy that people also appreciate them outside my family. Well, uh, first, I know uh, there was a death in your family, you know, that's why uh, you went into this funk and one way of dealing with it was uh, to try this new platform. I mean, some people go into gardening, diba, during the pandemic. I uh, did you that went into too. TikTok. Uh-oh. Uh, yeah, well, both of us, no? But, sabi mo nga, yung, you know, you have an interest in history, you know? Uh, dati kasi ang history was uh, kind of uh, a dry, you know, academic mm. subject na, you know, pinag-uusapan lang sa school. But uh, these days, no, it's it's a battlefield, no? It's a war, <laughs> almost, no? Um, uh, different versions of history, my alternative history, my my revisionist history, my real history, my chismis history, etc. No? Pero nung naisip mo pumasok sa TikTok, and uh, you know, indulge your interest in history. Were you, ano, were you ready for combat? I mean, uh, ano, ano, what were your, uh, uh, what were your expectations? Nung pumasok ka sa TikTok, intending to talk about history, especially uh, recent history. You know, yung co- more the more controversial parts of our history. I was so out of touch, na hawi, na. I came in, like I said, talagang self-indulgence lang. I have been a genealogist for 20 years. So I have researched a lot of families. Uh, and I had so much data that I would just dive into to lose myself. In the background, I didn't know. I didn't even anticipate. Uy, malapit na pala eleksyon. Uy, uh, meron pala sa YouTube, meron palang mga, mga alternative uh, histories na pinipresent. I didn't have any any knowledge of that. I didn't have any scan. It wasn't on my radar. Okay, when I when I did this, it was really myself. And um, all of these, uh, I would say, little fights that I eventually saw came in after I was already in into this for like a month. And in the first month, I had like 100,000 followers. Um, and I was surprised at the extent of the revisionist uh, the the revisionist narratives that uh, I found myself a, a reluctant um, sergeant in this war <laughs> na parang, uy, may away pala. Andito na ako, paano na lang yan? So pinaninindigan ko na lang. So before, ang content ko, parang one minute, I I just hold my phone on my my hand, tapos na. And usually, I, I talk about stock knowledge. Nung after September 21, I was deluged with all of these uh, comments. I, I said, 
I felt na, uy, I have to do do this a little better. Even if I know this already, I started uh, citing, I started uh, being very deliberate on what I say para I know that I have the evidence to back it up. So, ganun, ganun yung approach. And I think the good thing about coming into this with a genealogist's uh, discipline is um, we, we we only base our our material on documents on evidence. Hindi ko pwede sabi magkamag anak tayo na wala lang pareho lang kulay natin, right? So it it really is based on documentary proof, and I apply that to everything else that I do. I try to find um legitimate and uh, you know um reputable sources with what I what I put out there. So after one month on uh, TikTok, you already had 100,000 followers, no? So yeah. uh, data, if you consider uh, TikTok a battleground, no? Marami, marami ka biglang uh, kakampi. And then sabi mo nga, yung approach mo is, you know, history through genealogy for those who are not familiar with, with that particular uh, field, no? Ito yung pag-construct ng mga family trees, no? Uh, yung uh, pag-establish ng mga interconnections between families, between people that uh, sometimes... Uh, even even uh, uh, people in the family trees themselves uh, were not aware that they're part of that family tree. Uh, you don't sh- you don't avoid no you indica indica you don't evade controversial personalities in this no, I do not. in your history in your genealogy. Yeah. Maybe uh, occasionally you do you do showbiz no pero you do a lot of political people no. Uh, a recent example lang si Imelda Romualdez Marcos no. Um, very interesting yung yung nalaman mo for for uh, two reasons no one is uh ipinanganak pala siya sa San Juan de Dios no uh, which is interesting for me because that was our family hospital no number two the more it, maybe the more uh interesting uh thing that you found out no na na she, on her birth certificate was not the name Imelda she was born Hilda H I L the A, you know, uh, everybody knows Imelda Marcos. Nobody knows Hilda Marcos. Did you discover that on your own, or alam mo na to from reading her biography, and then you decided to turn it into a TikTok um, video and kind of, uh, kind of um, coyly pretend that it was a discovery? No, it wasn't. It it wasn't something I actually actually knew before. I was doing. Uh, a compilation of all of the uh, birth certificates, death certificates, marriage certificates of the Marcos family in the context of researching where were the places they lived because I was looking at another line of, of research. So looking for her birth, I can only find her baptismal. It was an interesting find uh, because I, I, I was I, know, I was disturbed. Now, why can't I find it? Na parang nakakainis. Kasi it's the the records were were available i had the right place i had the right date bakit wala siya and that is but because when... wait excuse me you were searching imelda romualdez correct at the time it's like a microfilm so pag binabasa mo you put your eye in the in the in the in the spot where the name of the child is so ano scan 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 it's not ano it's not uh, it's not like you Google it, it type mo lang, lalabas na. You have to read each and every uh, page of that book. Doon sa child field, name siya makita. So I just adjusted my eyes downwards. And now I started looking at the at the parents. And it was when I was looking at the parents na, ah, okay, hang on, ito yung parents nila. It's not likely that they had another child in the same year. And all and everything else matched. The address, the the job, the uh, the ages. It, it is natural to conclude that it's the right person. And it's not anything nefarious. Ha? There is in our history a lot of times when your birth certificate differs from your baptismal certificate. Meron yung mga, mga matatanda na sinasabi kapag masakitin yung bata, palitan mo yung pangalan para mawal, uh, hindi na siya mahanap ng masamang espiritu that was hounding the child. So baka ganun. That's why her baptismal record actually says Imelda Visitacion Remedios Remolde. So, yun na yung pangalan na ginagamit niya. And for like, uh, like if you want to travel abroad, back then, your baptismal certificate suffices. So, hindi na niya kailangan ng, ano, ng, ng birth certificate. But okay, but that created another mystery. Ano? So, paano siya naging Imelda nga? Uh, has she ever 
was this ever mentioned uh, in uh, in any of her biographies? Uh, so uh, did she ever she mention was, this? Did does she no. even know? <laughs> I, I don't know if uh, if she knew that she was um, recorded yeah. in her in civil records with a different name. She was baptized three days after she was born, and on her baptismal records, it was already using Imelda. So I I would think she just used what she got used to. Okay, I don't know well, if she would uh, know that. But at one point, siguro, she needed a birth certificate. No, because uh, before to get, na, baptismal, to, to get something. But, baptismal is acceptable. Ako, personally, my baptismal name is on my passport. Na mas, kung mm-hmm. may Maria. Eh, wala namang Maria mm-hmm. sa birth ko. So, mm-hmm. pinanindigan ko na lang yun. Kasi yun na yung nasa DFA. A lot of people, no? Nasanay sila na pupunta silang National Statistics Office, pipila ka, minsan hindi ka aabot dun sa cut-off, mag-aantay. So, na, online, na, online na ba itong mga documents na to? Birth certificates, marriage certificates, uh, baptismal? To, to do all of this research? Uh, not all records are online. So, if your, your materials uh, or birth certificate, marriage certificate, death certificate is after 1945, you go to NSA. If it's before 1945, you go to the National Archives. So, both of those methods, as in, Ang tagal. Sa National Archives, mm-hmm. posibleng maghintay ka ng taon for a document. So, mm-hmm. there are shortcuts that we use because there are paid, uh, paid um, uh, what do you call this, paid platforms that provide that service. Ancestry.com has it. FamilySearch.org has it. Uh, FamilySearch.org is a free it's a free platform. Pero I think because of government regulation, they are unable to show the documents. In my case, so it is only open to church members uh, because uh, genealogy is part of the Church of the Latter-day Saints, mm. um, you know, uh, I guess, processes. And that is why it is available to church members. And it's not and, just... And, excuse me, and you, you are a member of that church, that means? No, I'm their ad- adopted child. <laughs> Oh, okay. For research purposes. No, I've been researching kasi for 20 years. So I okay, have Okay, so you friends. got this privilege. Yes, and and uh I think uh I I they see me more than the ch- their church members. Let's let's put it that way. And uh I really help I really want to help them promote that discipline. My ask is for the government to do this service for us. It should be easier for us to look at historical records, not just mm-hmm. civil records, not just those that pertain to our family. The data privacy law, in my view, should open historical uh, data, digitized historical documents to the general public. And I'm a vocal, I'm, I'm a vocal supporter of that uh, kind of that change. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, you know, you've used these research, specialized research skills in genealogy, you know, to to establish all kinds of connections. You you did a TikTok video uh, connecting Bongbong Marcos and Chris Aquino, you no? Uh, but it wasn't very close, no? Uh, but you were able to do it anyway, no? Those are the two families that are, you know, I have uh, at our that have been at loggerheads uh, in our recent history, you know, but yang sinasabi mo mag magkamag-anak uh, si Bongbong at si Chris. And not just that, Ninoy and Marcos. Ninoy Aquino It was and... actually it's actually Imelda and Ninoy who are related by marriage because see, Ninoy's okay. tita is the wife of uh, a relative of Imelda. Okay, but uh, by affinity, related kay Ferdinand Marcos. Correct. So they are related by marriage, one marriage lang, so it's not very far. In the same way that Chris Aquino and, and Bongbong Marcos are also related by marriage, also by the titas. In that case, they have titas who were sisters, like they mm-hmm. were they married into their families. And again, this is me um, really sometimes having uh, a memory for, uy, kila yung ano yung relative ni ganito si ganyan sometimes natatandaan ko siya so when the time comes that i have to draw the the map of the family trees i i, I kind of visualize it i also have all of this recorded so i have a database with everything uh and i i just search for this name and search for this name how are they connected let me find the line it it is uh, partly the, uh, what i remember and partly the tools that i have that will help me kind of make those connections i am a, 
uh, an online curator for Jenny.com, which is a genealogy platform. And that is where most of my research lives. Uh, I, I make it available to anyone who, who wants to, to research. But that is, of course, 50 years and above. Every, everything, everything else closer, I mean, in the last 50 years, they can't access. Um, but older generations, they can definitely access. Itong Rizal and Leonor Rivera, no? Jose Rizal's uh, great love si Leonor Rivera, no? So uh, you have a TikTok video about them, uh, about their love and their, you know, they, they broke each other's hearts. Uh, but you also revealed they were second cousins, no? Correct. Oh, and I guess even back then, may pagkatabu na rin yun, ano? To, to be in love and maybe and, and uh, to get married uh, to a second cousin. But what what I found interesting there was uh yung sinasabi mong you know yung nanay ni Leonor Rivera tinago yung mga love letters ni Jose Rizal from her mm-hmm. so akala ni Leonor hindi na siya sinusulatan no uh, and then finally na reveal na uh, yun nga uh, her, her Leonor's mother uh, had been confiscating had been intercepting all of the re- letters from Rizal and ter- eventually turned them over to Leonor when Leonor uh, agreed to marry uh, an Englishman, no? Uh, and then uh, you mentioned that um, uh, nung, nung bago magpakasal, itong si Leonor at saka yung Englishman, sinunog ni Leonor yung mga sulat, no? And then nilu- nilagay, nilagay dun sa, sa loob ng wedding gown. That was the cheese twist okay. around that I, myth. Yes, I want to ask you, no? So there's this whole conversation now about his history as chismis and chismis as history and basically nagulit ka ng chismis no and then kind of passing it off as history i mean what's your what's your take on that no kasi yeah. parang uh, i i don't know if that video preceded this whole tiff no, no? between ambeth ocampo and this uh, artista who okay. who said history is like chismis yes. uh, she she came out in uh, in the this movie, no, uh, made in Malacanang, uh, which was kind of a, you know, uh, kind of a promotional uh, movie for about the Marcos, no. Mm-hmm. Pero yeah, you know, um, it, it was a very uh, tantalizing piece of information. Pero yun nga, inemphasize mo na cheese mi shop. And Paano I, I wanted uh, to annoy. Is, is that part of history? Is that I should that be part of history? I wanted to spur that conversation primarily on that. Because everything else is based on evidence. There are letters around it. There were document there. There were documented um, uh, diaries around all of the stories, except for the myth around the burned ashes. The burning of the ashes was all. There was also his uh, uh, evidence around that, and this is uh, again uh, through through letters and through um, uh, diaries, so personal accounts, but. There, I couldn't find any evidence on the on the the burning uh, the putting in the the the, the gown what do you call this? the gown. gown and being buried with the ashes. Those were the two stories. So I wanted to highlight that histories are established by evidence, and that that's that's the most important thing. Kapag chismis siya, sasabihin mo na ang chismis. Ang chi- and that was the a, a very clear demarcation in my in my uh my video and that's also the conversation I'm having with the you know people who comment. Parang gets niyo naman yung difference, 'di ba? Na may mm-hmm. yung history, may ebidensya, yung chismis wala. So, okay, sige, mas enjoy kasi ang chismis eh. So, sige, pag chismisan natin, basta klaro tayo na wala siyang ebidensya. I have also other other uh other things that people were making chismis about that is uh okay si Antonio Luna at si Isidra Cojuanco were they actually uh, together <laughs> did she inherit the the money of the Katipunan lahat yan chismis kasi walang ebidensya tapos I also had another round of uh conversations with people oh si ano daw si Ninoy Aquino daw um uh, ano is is a, a result of incest like magkamag-anak daw yung magulang niya sabi ko totoo yun they're second cousins pero that is not incest na incest would actually mean two degrees of separation ikaw o kaya magulang mo o kaya lolo lola mo yon incest yon mm-hmm. ikaw or pamangkin mo yon incest yon pero second cousins hindi incest yon so yun yung mga 
I think uh very uh clear na I I I uh, lay down in conversations. Kasi I wanted to use the videos also to trigger the the right kind of or 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 to model the right kind of behavior when talking about history. So mm-hmm. talk about history and talk about chismis. You can do that basta clear ko ano yung diferensya. How far will you stretch that? Kasi ang dami ngayong uh, mga controversial narratives, no? I mean, you know, I guess they've been they some of them have been already debunked as false, no? Pero kumakalat pa rin uh, I guess as as chismis pero maraming naniniwala dahil kinakalat siya and uh, because they agree with your political point of view uh, uh kin- kinakalat naman ng uh, lalong kinakalat no uh, so uh, y- yung sinabi mo na itong about uh, Leonor and Rizal medyo harmless chismis naman yan no but there are a lot of chismis you know, you've you've actually taken them up no yung Taliano Gold yung uh you know uh, ninoy as a as a malaysian uh, or npa or uh you know uh lenny lenny robredo as npa and all well, i mean those you could you could brand that as chismis no but uh, uh how far would you go in uh airing chismis uh said there are there is chismis na medyo damaging kung, right. kung ilalabas mo and that is the line that i don't cross like uh if there is already malicious uh, intent or result. Just an example, if I hear, like yung kay Pulinario Mabini, ang chismis is, na, 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 nalumpo siya dahil sa syphilis. Pero may ebidensya that's, that said, when when he was exhumed, nakita na polio. So, those are the kinds of things naman na for me, is also a little, a, a nice challenge. Na okay, ito yung chismis, bigyan natin, lagyan natin ng, ano, ng ebidensya. Pag-usapan natin kung ano yung source, pag-usapan natin kung totoo ba to or hindi. I also find that, uh, you know, a big part of the content that I do, uh, debunking chismis, and, or, or supporting it, depende, di ba? Doon lang tayo sa tama at sa totoo. And I think that's, that's, that, that's kind of my battle cry. Ano ba yung totoo? So how do you find the time to do this? Uh, you're not. Are, are, is this a no? Uh, is there a business model uh, for for TikTok that you're taking advantage of? I mean, with the size of your following now, I know you're, you're. Are you monetizing uh, your your content already? I have actually been asked to promote certain causes, and I've been selective. So if you're selling, mm-hmm. if you're selling something like cortina, I will not do it. But I did. I did one for uh, for world world vision so those are mm-hmm. those are causes that align to mine and i was compensated for that pero tiktok is not ano tiktok is not a career it is really something that i'm doing already as a service eh. uh, i do yeah. work with an ngo so i'm an i'm the national president of the autism society philippines and that takes so much of my time so i carve out like the the end of my day uh for this and i i film it i i edit it and I even put captions because I'm in the disability community. The captioning is important to me, and uh, so I I do the I, I do and I check the captions. That that's about a three hour thing. Isang TikTok for every video. For every video before I'm bilis lang eh. Kaya lang ngayon that's, I check uh, the research. Uh, but yung wala, three wala hours na research no, no? So you're talking you're talking just production and post production. Kasi sa sa li- language namin sa TV you no, know, there's pre production which is the research and you know all your preparation before you actually uh, start rolling the camera no. On your part it includes reading books and and yeah. and researching no. And uh, before pero, nga, you know, I, I was just doing stock knowledge. So there are nights I don't have videos because that's the time that I'm actually researching. Uh, I guess you're trying to prove a point then. No? You're trying to prove a point about TikTok that it's not just full of uh, bad dancing and um, yeah. and disinformation. Uh, yeah. There's also some good stuff there. Right. And I think uh, especially you know people in, my gener- in our generation were quick to put down TikTok. But what we we have to appreciate that there is power in short form video, and the kids are watching that. So you have a generation that is uh, making this something cool that the you know the the older generation cannot understand. So it's a perfect platform for them to learn. And while there is a lot of bad content, there's also a lot of good content on TikTok. It really depends on what you watch, because what what is pushed out to you depends on what you what you linger on. 
uh, on your timeline. So if you continue to angry watch all of these uh, revisionist, uh, you know, revisionist accounts, then that's what's going to be pushed to you. But if you consciously not watch them, take the air out of of their flame, then you're going to be, you know, the the you're going to get to watch better content. Mm. Well, you know, uh, recently you pushed back on a politician who's who's lobbying or advocating ROTC, you know, for young people. Because yeah. um, young people, sabi niya, need discipline. The youth are being spoiled. They're just, uh, you know, just wasting their time on their phones doing TikTok, you know, as mm-hmm. if it's a waste of time, no? And then sabi mo nga, sandali lang, no? Uh, TikTok is not just full of trash. There's there's good content, sabi mo nga, no? Yeah. Uh, and even in our generation, may tamad. Tamad is not about what you watch or what you consume. Yeah, and 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 as you said, I mean, even before the internet, uh, wala nang disiplina, maraming tao. No? So it has nothing to do with uh, social yeah. media, uh, etc. But in that same video, you cited, you endorsed no, certain uh, TikTok video creators as as people who, uh, who were offering good content. Uh, and I listed the, some of them down. No? Doc Krizel Luna, who's a physician, a uh, doctor, and then Doc John, who's a dentist. And these people are offering advice in, I guess, entertaining ways about, uh, well, the dentist is, is you know talks about taking care of your teeth and uh, see Dr. Krizel Luna, of course, is uh, health advice. And then yung another doctor, no? Killing, killing Manguru. Uh, and then you, you also cited this uh, hashtag, EduWow, no? Yung pag, kapag may educational content na may gagamit ka ng, ng hashtag, no? But my question is, I mean, no doubt, no? Uh, there is good content. But if you weigh it against the bad content, uh, how, I mean, ano ba to? Uh, how, how much bad content uh, is, there out, uh, is there out there? Me naman kasi, I, I see that there are a lot of people who have different opinions. But I think what needs to happen is not to shut, shut that conversation, but to have certain standards. And we have been communicating with TikTok uh, directly about this, and they have been very receptive. They have a policy, they have a policy head. And the policy head actually very recently just had a launch on how the platform is taking measures to, to secure uh, data of individuals and also to promote the right kind of content. And one of the things that they are pushing for now is originality. So if you are going to steal your content, Hmm. like from GMA, a little bit of GMA news, a little bit of this and kind of smash them together with your opinion, that is not original content. So So they're taking steps to make the experience of the user more valuable. And I think that means drowning out those with poor quality content. They do have also people on their watch list like those who are uh, known to ha- to uh, be uh, pushers of uh, lies and they're being watched if that individual has already been deplatformed on YouTube for instance they, they are already on their their watch list and th- there are a few um i would say pseudo political personalities who have already been deplatformed and i think that's the that's that's the important thing the 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 I guess the small scale liars, uh, that is uh, uh, something that we we deal with day to day, and even among our us content creators, we also get to know each other. Eh? Together as a community, we we talk about uh, what what those accounts have done, and we we report them. And in many cases, they act on it, naman. But if mm-hmm. you just if as a regular consumer you saw it and ah, okay, pang it, you just scroll through without reporting them, then you're also, I guess, missing on the opportunity to improve the situation. We cannot just let them be. We have to do mm-hmm. something. We have to act on it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, uh, of course, uh, you're not just a user of TikTok and content creator. You're a parent, no? So, uh, what would you advise other parents, parents of teens and and tweens? You know, uh, ch- children are are starting to go on TikTok, no? Uh, what what are the dangers? Uh, what should they watch out for? I mean, I mean, what are the what are the most hazardous things on TikTok? Well, I would I wouldn't. And again, this is I think uh, in my case, because I have always been very uh, vocal. Uh, to my children about uh you know critical thinking uh digital savvy na 
to a certain degree they teach me na parang mom that's ano that's baiting you or mom this is this is not good content it's i heard about this from another platform that it's uh you know they they steal your data so my children are actually quite savvy with uh, double checking and going across platforms to look at particular accounts so since parents mm-hmm. can't do that the important thing lang siguro is to um n- Make sure your children do not live on the internet. Um, I don't think we should live online. Because a lot of kids and commenters I I know, parang they have this yabang and and tapang on on comment section that they forget that that's not how regular people converse. That you can't have that kind of feistiness on social media, but never but can never say that face to face so parang i always calibrate your behavior as human being in the real world should reflect your behavior online and that's what i teach my children if you can't if you can't do that then uh, you shouldn't be online and mm-hmm. i think parents nga should also become digitally literate themselves that's the only way they can advise their kids i don't believe in saying oh don't no, don't do this or don't watch that or don't do this siguro the only exception would be for known uh uh peddlers of this information you let your kids know that that's not a good that's not a good thing to watch but so you know, the content is one thing no and then uh, you know the danger to kids no but uh itong itong uh, allegation that uh, TikTok is a tool for Chinese uh, surveillance uh, because we know that TikTok is is owned by a uh, mainland Chinese company. In fact, in uh, it's a U.S. No, the 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 chairman of the Federal Communications Commission. No, that you know that kind of body has already warned um, uh, Google, uh, Apple, and uh, maybe other um, major technology companies uh, about. TikTok and and basically requesting them to remove TikTok from their app stores, no. And just to quote, itong si Brendan Carr, no, the chair ng Federal Communications Commission, no. Sabi niya, he called TikTok a quote sophisticated surveillance tool that harvests extensive amounts of personal and sensitive data. A uh, close quote that collects re- uh, search and browsing histories, face prints, voice prints, even keys, keystroke patterns as well as clipboard uh data not not that you know you're you're engaged in you know nas- national security issues or or data no <laughs> uh mona but baka may hidden agenda pala in china jan no uh right. harvesting all of this uh information and data and crunching all of these numbers yeah. and knowing all of these things about us and we know we have issues with china here yeah. in the philippines and I, I actually had uh, uh, the opportunity to to chat with uh, TikTok, the leadership of TikTok, um, uh, at one event, and I asked them that question. So at the at the time, there was the head of uh, I think PR who was who was uh, in the country, and he explained that the FCC issue was really born by their concerns about where the hardware lived. Because if the hardware is based in China, then they would not have any uh, laws to protect that kind of behavior. But uh, TikTok came back with a response to this, saying that all of their servers are actually not in China. They're in um, in Ireland and in Singapore. So their concern about uh, that lapse in, in behavior is not happening in those two countries because the the digital security laws of those countries are protecting our information. So that's what I was told. I wouldn't know anything else, uh, you know, deeper than that. Yeah, and um, to be honest, when I registered uh, for TikTok, it asked for my birth date, and I didn't give a real one. With that in mind. I don't know. Is that good advice for TikTok? Uh, what I, kind of data should we not be sharing there? In in all honesty, I don't think people are honest when they disclose their birth dates, especially the kids, because okay. putting the, your birth date limits the kind of materials that you get. So this is to, to protect the those under 18. So if you're mm. under 18, there are certain content that you cannot access. Ako personally, I also don't give my, my real birth date. Because yeah, it is something that you know they can use in a bank or whatever. So don't don't give them your your real birthdays. When you first started, sabi mo nga, you know you were dealing with tragedy. So I suppose 
uh, producing content for uh, TikTok about you know what you thought was kind of uh, innocent subject matter, uh, genealogy, history, uh, you know, would give you comfort. No, but now, uh, a year later, uh, yun nga, TikTok is a battleground. There's a lot of falsehood there. And, um, you, you know, you're one of those who have been countering all of these falsehoods. Uh, does, does TikTok still give you comfort? I think, uh, well, I, I, I have, I, I carry my grief very, very close to the surface. So the TikTok helps. Uh, it keeps my brain busy and it distracts me from other things. Uh, it gives me an outlet for creativity. Uh, my work today, uh, while it is very important, does not give me the the opportunity to be, you know, to be wacky when I want and to be serious when I want. Because serious ako palagi sa trabaho. It, it gives me an outlet. It gives me the opportunity to talk to guys like you. I a year after I all started, I've, I'm also getting invitations to talk to kids, to talk to people in school, um, to talk to educators. Kumbaga, my, my sphere of influence has, has widened a bit. And I would like to use that gift to just promote uh, digital literacy, uh, critical thinking. And I guess the the we, we have to put a premium on the truth. And it is not as vague as what people think it is. It is it is quite easy to find that if you are talking about genealogy or history. Uh, and we should not be faked into thinking that everything is up in the air and everything is uh, you know is is not true because there are absolutes uh, in the world. That's a very wise note to end on. Thank you for your time and uh, for being a voice for truth. Mona Magno Velus, also known as Mighty Magulang. Mabuhay ka at maraming maraming salamat sa lahat ng ginagawa mo. Thank you, Howie. Hi, I'm Howie Severino. Check out the Howie Severino Podcast, an original for GMA News and Public Affairs. New episodes will stream every Thursday. Listen for free on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and other platforms.